Hello and welcome back to this channel. So today's tutorial is going to be all about how to create a seamless pattern in Procreate 5X. So I'm saying Procreate 5X because there's one feature in this new version of Procreate that is really helpful in creating this seamless pattern. And one more thing, make sure to stick till the end because I'm going to show you how to export this pattern depending on where you want to upload it. For example, Spoonflower needs a different kind of export whereas print on demand sites like redbubble or society6 you need to export them in a different format okay so let's just get started so i'm going to click on this plus button right here and we're going to go ahead and click on this plus button again so let me choose inches and i'm going to start with 10 into 10 inches and 300 dpi and this gives us about 55 layers that's a lot to work with so let's go ahead and click on create so I already have a sketch drawn because I thought it'll make it quicker. So I'm just going to bring that into the artboard. Okay, so my sketch is here and now it's time to color it. One thing you should know is you should always start with the background color because then you can choose the all other colors based on your background color. So now if you start off the artwork and try to color everything and later if you try to design or use a background color, it gets so difficult because it has to match with all of the other colors. So I'm just gonna go ahead and choose a background color. So I've already created a color palette for this and I wanted to keep it simple, but it turned out to be a lot of colors as usual. So I'm just going to click this and choose a very dark background color. But as you can see, if I choose that very dark background color, you guys will not be able to see what's happening in the sketch layer. So that's the whole reason I'm going to turn off the background layer just for this tutorial. So now I'm going to go in and draw all the elements. I'm going to speed up this process a bit because uh, it takes a lot of time to draw these things out. And uh, just to let you know, I'm just using a monoline brush. And my technique for drawing these things is I just draw like this and then click and drag and put it over there. But just remember one thing that each element should be on a separate layer. Otherwise, you will not be able to move them around and adjust it. So let's go ahead and draw this out. So this flower was a little complicated, so I drew it in two different layers. And once I'm done with that, I'm just going to click and merge them together. So now it's on one layer. Okay, so we are done with all our elements and this is how your artwork should look like. So I have picked few elements and I actually got rid of some of them which I had sketched out because I thought it was too much. So now it's time to arrange these things in a way that we would want it to be arranged. So before doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these by swiping like this. Not the sketch layer, just all the elements and click on group. So now it is a new group. Now I'll swipe to the left and click on duplicate. Now I'll uncheck the older group. This is because we have to always keep our work. You don't want to delete off anything or damage anything so that you can always go back to that step and uh, create things from scratch if you want to. All right, in this one, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna arrange things so that they look nice and uh, yeah, pretty. Let's just go ahead and click on this one because this is the, the biggest one. Go to your transform tool and let's turn off snapping and stuff. Let it be in uniform. I'm going to go ahead and keep it like somewhat in the center. Now, let me go to this orange one. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and arrange these things. Thank you. 
Okay, so now I've arranged all the elements in a way that I want, and now it's time to actually convert this into a repeating pattern. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead like this, and since I've arranged it as I want, I'm going to click and click on flatten. So what it makes is it creates this one single layer where all your images, I mean, all your elements are in one single layer. So now we can work with this one, but I don't want to work with this particular layer because I want to keep it as a backup. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. I'll click in on this and click and rename it as as original. And then let's go ahead to our layer three. I'm going to uncheck that original layer because I don't want to mess with it. And in here, now we're going to try and actually move them around so that we can create a repeating pattern. So how do we do that? So before doing that, I'm going to duplicate this again and create two of them. And I'm going to click on a new layer and I'll choose something very bright. Let's see this one over here. And I'm going to be on that blank layer. I'm going to mark these corners. So you don't really have to do this, but it kind of helps you figure out the edges. So make sure you mark the corners really well. And now it's easy to move them around. Go ahead and swipe this layer as well. So these two are selected. And now let's go to the transform tool. So now what happens is when you're trying to move these layers, both of these layers are going to move together. But make sure you go ahead and click on snapping and magnetics. Mine is kept at 19 and max. You could set it to whatever is comfortable for you. And wait a minute, let me just make it smaller so that you can see it. And then now we'll slowly move this. As you can see, until you see the yellow line. Do you see the yellow line here? You should see the yellow line here as well. And it should sit properly. And once you feel it's sitting properly, you can just click on your tool and it should be done. And now you can go ahead and delete this off. We don't need that. Now for the second one, I'm just going to click on one more like this. And I can uncheck this because if it's bothering you too much, just uncheck it. And now we will create the same marker again. Okay, and then select both layers, transform. And now we're going to move to the other side of the artboard like this. And as you can see, you can see all the orange or yellow lines and let go and it should be done. So let's go back and click and delete this one. Now turn back this one on. So now you can see like it exactly cuts and begins like this. So now we want to just fill in these small blanks and then it should be good to go. So what I'm going to do is I'll just make a few more elements. So this is totally up to you, like whatever feels like goes in this blanks. Make sure you do that. I'm just going to, this is too big. You can actually merge these two layers now and that should be good. And I'm going to go ahead and make some elements. When you're satisfied with the elements that you have actually done. So make sure you just concentrate on this gap here. You don't have to worry about the top and the bottom right now. Okay, so once you're done that, you have this layer. Now we're going to swipe and duplicate it. So this is our original two. So we're going to go ahead and rename it again as as original two. Okay, that didn't take the layer thing because I should have selected it. And let's keep it like that and uncheck it. And now we're going to go ahead and do this exact same process of moving it on this layer. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. Click on one more layer and in here we'll put our markers. Go ahead, swipe, swipe, transform. And now we move this up. And you can see the orange line. So as you know, it snaps here as well, but that's not the right place. So you should go ahead and snap it so that you see all the orange or yellow lines. Once it's done, it's done. Now you can actually go ahead and delete this. So I'll go back to this one now, click on new layer. And in here, let's mark this. Okay, let me go uncheck this. And you can actually slide like that and then go to transform. And now we're going to move it down. Okay, click on done and delete. Now turn these both on and you can see what's happening here. Merge these two. 
and now it's time to fill in these places but as you can see this is a whole gap and you don't want to be drawing everything so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring in some of the elements from our group that we created on here so all you can do is you can actually go ahead and duplicate this we could use all the elements again and then let me just go ahead and click this open and you can see everything now. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and move these things around. For example, this one, and I'm going to turn it and decrease the size and maybe place it somewhere here like this. So if this is too confusing, what we could do is just uncheck everything. And you can just place the one which you are actually trying to do. Make sure you don't do the original group, just the one which you duplicated right now. Make sure you don't put anything on the edge because that's really important. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the snapping because it does not let me move things very nicely. And you can also flip some things. For example, this snail, I want to actually flip horizontal so that it's something like this. Okay, so I think I filled up some spaces, but I'm just going to go ahead and add some dots as well. Okay, so I guess that looks fine. It's actually now a seamless pattern, but uh, we haven't figured it out yet. So, okay, mm, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this group and we're going to go ahead and flatten it okay and then move it all the way up and merge with the layer that we did just now so we have a separate you know this hole as a one single block so now this is actually a repeating pattern now but we have to go ahead and check it so what i'm going to do now is go ahead and duplicate it and then i'm going to rename this original three it just doesn't work that well for me i don't know okay so i'm just gonna uncheck that and now for layer three what i'm going to do is go to your transform tool go to snapping and magnetics and now i'm going to go ahead and bring this all the way down so that it becomes one fourth of this whole page and click like this now i'll go ahead and duplicate it and go next like this and bring it like this and click on next and in here i'm going to merge these two so they become like one element and then duplicate it and go to transform again and bring them all the way up and now you can see your pattern so what you have to do is just go in and see that there are no breaks or cuts where you actually join them and now it looks pretty good right like it looks all filled up there are no empty spaces and stuff like that so this means your pattern is really good and it actually works as a seamless pattern so i'm just going to go ahead and merge these two so this is your actually pattern So this is your pattern, but we're not going to export this for anything. We're not going to use it actually. So this was just to check because if you just scroll right in, you can see that it's it has a bit of a racked edges because we tried to reduce the size and stuff like that. Uh, we don't want that. So what we're going to do now is going to uncheck it and uh, let's go ahead and click on our original pattern. So this is the basic block. So I'm going to rename this as basic block. So now is the time when you decide how you want to export this thing. If you want to update it to a site like Spoonflower, where it automatically creates a pattern out of the block that you provide, you can export it like this. You can go ahead on this branch, click on share and click on JPEG because it gives a flattened uh, version of it. And then you can either send it, uh, you can save the image or send it to your Mac or or whatever, and then upload it to Spoonflower. So you don't have to actually upload a pattern to Spoonflower, you can just upload a pattern block like this. So let's talk about the print on demand sites right now. When it comes to print on demand sites, they don't actually create a seamless pattern automatically. So if you want to upload it to things like uh, comforters or huge ones, you actually cannot upload this box 
because first of all it's 10 into 10 inches it's pretty small uh, and it's going to take just this block as the design and we want to actually upload a pattern to upload to these sites one problem is that you need the artboard to be really huge and procreate has a problem that if you have really huge artboards it limits the number of layers you can use so I would have loved to show you in this particular artboard itself, like what I tried to do, but I cannot do that. So what we're going to do is we we'll, let's go back to gallery, swipe and duplicate it. Now click on that. Let's go here and let's get rid of all the unwanted layers. So we don't need this pattern. We don't need any of these original ones because we already have a file and that's the main reason we duplicated it. So I'm just going to delete all of these things and just keep the basic elements. So now let's go to file and click on canvas and click on crop and resize. Go to settings and in here I'm going to give 20 inches into 20 inches and 300 dpi done. Don't give resample or snapping that should be fine dpi 300 and click on done. And it's going to enlarge your artboard. And now what we're going to do is duplicate it. Click, make sure your snapping is turned on and drag it so that it goes and sits nicely like this. Go ahead and merge these two. Duplicate it. Click and bring it way down so that it sits nicely over here. Make sure there are no blocks. And uh, your pattern is ready to be exported to print-on-demand sites like Redbubble and Society6. You can do the same thing as export it as JPEG and it would work fine. By the way, you can also increase the artboard size to whatever Procreate limits. Uh, and then you can make pattern bigger or smaller depending on that. Okay, so I guess we have reached the end of this tutorial. And I really hope you liked it. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. If you do create something awesome out of this, let me know. If you want the color palette, I'll share the color palette with you guys and you can go ahead and create your own things. But I'm not going to share the sketch because I'm planning to upload this to one of the Redbubble or Society6 pages. So I don't want others to be doing the same thing. And um, by the way, I have a Redbubble store where I upload all my designs. So if you want to go check it out, you can find the link in the description box below. And I would really like it if you leave a comment or two on how you you like my designs so i guess that's it for now and uh if you have any questions regarding this don't hesitate to leave a comment below and i'll get back to you as soon as possible okay i guess i'll see you in the next video then bye bye